Hello, welcome to Helping.ca, and a huge congratulations to all of the students who have just moved into their dorm rooms for the start of a brand new school year. Today, we're talking to Dr. Shelley McNeil. She is the Division Head and Service Chief for the Division of Infectious Diseases at the Nova Scotia Health Authority, and she's talking to us today about meningitis B, why it's so important to talk to your doctor about getting vaccinated, and why students living on their own for the first time might particularly want to consider getting this vaccination. Dr. McNeil, thank you so much for agreeing to speak to us today. We really, really appreciate it. And we're talking today about meningitis B and the risk that students are facing when they go and live in dorms and live in these communal spaces for the first times in their lives. Uh, first of all, what is meningitis B? Meningitis B is a bacteria. So it's a bacteria that causes serious infections, usually two main types of infections. One is meningitis, which is an inflammation of the lining around the brain and spinal cord. And the other is bloodstream infection. So the bacteria can also get into the bloodstream and cause sepsis. Sometimes those two things happen together and sometimes you can have meningitis or bloodstream infection separately. But either way, it's quite a serious infection that can come on pretty quickly and progress pretty quickly. And most children are uh, vaccinated against certain forms of meningitis, right? Yeah, we in, in Canada, we vaccinate all uh, infants against uh, a, one strain of meningitis called meningitis type C. And then in adolescence, in the school-based program, we give another vaccine booster dose that covers four different strains of uh, meningitis, but does not cover meningitis B. And that's one of the challenges right now is that a lot of people think they've been vaccinated for meningitis B. You know, as a parent, if we got all the babies recommended vaccines and then we signed all the consent forms in school and got all the vaccines that were recommended in school, when we're sending our kids off to university or college, we think, I've done everything I need to do. I've, I've protected them as much as I can through vaccination. But in fact, they don't realize that meningitis B vaccine is a bit newer, but also not part of the publicly funded um, school-based or baby vaccine program. So unless someone's specifically gone out and sought the meningitis B vaccine, which we would remember, of course, because we probably paid for it if that were the case, uh, then you probably have not had meningitis B vaccine. So that's a big part of what we're trying to get out there now is the people know that this disease exists, but also know that they can protect themselves from vaccination, but have not yet had the vaccine. What is it about? How is it spread? What is it about moving to university and college that puts you at, in a certain risk? Yeah, meningitis B is spread by droplets. So close contacts, you know, lives in the nose and throat and can get transmitted by close contacts. So sharing instrument, sharing if eating utensils, sharing cigarettes, drinks, those sorts of things, kissing, you know, all things that happen when you're in and you're in with large numbers of people. So it's more likely that someone in that crowd has this bacteria sort of living asymptomatically in their nose or throat. So the first time you're in university is sort of your highest risk period for catching meningitis B because you're in such close quarters and you know there's lots of secretion sharing in the, in undergrad and in colleges as we all remember. So, you know, that's that's the basic way it's transmitted and it's hard to you know, do anything to protect yourself from that, right? You're going to be living in a dorm, you're in close contact. It's not realistic to say, you know, don't have close contact with anyone, obviously. So the the better way to protect yourself is really through vaccination. We know that kids who are young adults who live in a university, uh, who, who go off to university are at about three times higher risk of ca catching men B than kids the same age who are not in university or college, more so uh, if they're in a, in a dorm environment, as you mentioned. Yeah, I remember living in dorms and you hope that your roommates are washing their dishes before you use them, but you're never really quite sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, and how well they're washing them. <laughs> Just running it under some warm water and that's it. <laughs> Doesn't count. <laughs> and what are the symptoms? If you come into contact with this bacteria, what are the symptoms of that? Well, that's one of the challenges of treating men B is that it's quite nonspecific. So in the beginning, people feel just generally unwell, sore muscles, fatigue, maybe some nausea, vomiting. But the hallmark signs of men B or meningitis in general, but men B too, are headache, um, especially when it's associated with fever. So, you know, people often ask, well, when should I worry that I have men B and go to, say, an emergency department? That's a hard one because initially you won't, there won't be anything specific. But the things to watch for are headache with fever and then men, meningitis B um, and other forms of some other forms of meningitis are associated with a very unusual rash. 
So if you have headache fever and you develop an unusual rash, usually on the lower extremities, but can be in other parts of the body, sort of a bright red, angry looking um, rash, we call it a petechial rash. If, if people have that constellation, headache, fever, and a rash, then definitely they should um, seek attention. It won't always progress to the more severe forms, correct? A lot of people will get over it on their own. Uh, not really, no. Meningitis, meningitis B is a is a uh, quite a severe bacterial infection that requires urgent early treatment. So without early urgent treatment, which again, it, it progresses over about 24 hours, it can be fatal. So about one in 10 people who catch um, NB will die from it. And about a, one in three of the people who survive it, even with appropriate treatment, will have complications, long-term complications. And that can be things like hearing loss, vision loss, cognitive changes. Sometimes the infection is so severe that um, people require amputation as part of the treatment for meningitis B. So amputations. So quite a serious uh, infection. So that's why it's important that we try to prevent it as opposed to treating it because even with prompt appropriate treatment, uh, the outcomes can be quite terrible. Absolutely. By the time you notice it sounds these symptoms, it could be quite far along. Yeah, and it's important to remember that this is a rare infection. I don't want to scare everyone going off to university. You know, this is a this is a very rare infection. We see about 150-ish, say 100 to 200 cases a year, depending on where you, you know, which data you look at. So it's not a common infection, but it is a severe infection when it happens. And, you know, we see tragedies not infrequently, unfortunately, when you have large numbers of students in a province, you know, there's a pretty good odds that we're going to see a case of NB at some point. And that's, and that's been our experience here in Nova Scotia over the last couple of years. We've had a couple of deaths in, in uh, young university students that have prompted all of our interest in making sure that people are aware of the vaccine and have the opportunity to protect themselves before they uh, head off to university or college. Absolutely. Yeah. Make sure you're safe and then you can focus on the important stuff when you get to university rather than dealing with something like this. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Dr. McNeil, thank you so much for speaking as, to us today. This was fantastic and super informative. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your summer. Thanks very much. You too. Nice meeting you, Emma. <laughs>